Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Queensland sweltered through another day of plus 30 heat. The prolonged spells of heat and humidity are already impacting on threatened native species and we could be making the problem worse. When the temperature heats up, the appeal of switching on the air conditioning is obvious. But this increased energy usage could be the very thing causing the extreme temperatures. People will be using air conditioning more because they will want to um, abate the, the high temperatures, more greenhouse gases will be produced. So we're in a bit of a, a tight sort of circle here in terms of cause and effect. He says scientific studies have proved a direct link between climate change and major environmental disasters. Uh, the main impact on human life will be uh, increased temperatures and extremes of temperature. And we've seen these, these extreme weather events globally. But we're not the only species at risk. Our koalas also could face a massive population decline. Researchers have found the rise in Australia's temperatures have sent the furry marsupials seeking cooler homes. They're being found in the shadier pine, casuarina and kurajong trees. The problem is, these leaves are the wrong kind of koala food. Well certainly in times of drought uh, the koalas become dehydrated and also the, uh, the nutritional, nutritional value of the trees that they normally feed on, so what they browse on is greatly reduced. So this summer do the environment a favour. Switch off the air conditioning at home and beat the heat in a cooler way. <gasps> Rosie Jumelay, QUT News. Fire heartbreak overnight for one Sydney family. The couple in their 60s lost their multi-million dollar home and all their possessions, including a prized vintage car. It was one of a spate of fires across the city. Ian and Barbara Smith lost everything as flames ripped through their Taramara home just after midnight. Neighbours tried to contain the blaze with garden hoses until emergency crews arrived. Started hearing these huge pops and explosions actually, probably two or three explosions and we just sat up right in bed, looked out the window and the whole house was on fire. I was concerned that it was going to leap across the valley, as were the police, because you could see the flames licking the tops of the trees at one point. Firefighters did all they could to save the property, but the blaze was too intense. Bright orange, and it was, you know, emergency action, getting everybody up and out, didn't know what was, um, was happening. This was the Smith's pride and joy, a vintage Morgan believed to be worth around $100,000. It was crushed by a collapsing roof, then burnt out. Also overnight, fire ripped through a South Sydney home at Guyamia Bay. All five occupants escaped uninjured. The blaze is considered suspicious. It's reported a high-ranked police officer is the home's owner. And yesterday afternoon, a communal area on the rooftop of an eight-storey block in the CBD went up in flames, forcing all residents to be evacuated. One person was trapped in a stairwell but was eventually freed unharmed. Tom Hartley, QUT News. Electrical industry regulators want an immediate recall of substandard cables, believed to have been installed in thousands of Australian homes. Independent tests done by the New South Wales government show there is a danger of fires and electrocution from the imported cable. The suspect cable went onto the market 18 months ago, mainly through Masters Home Improvement. The Infinity branded TPS and orange round electrical cables do not meet Australian standards. A master's statement says the cables pose no immediate risk, but the chain has stopped selling the product and will offer refunds to customers. It's also getting independent quality assurance tests done on the cable. Master Electricians Australia say the protective plastic coating on the suspect cables will deteriorate over time leaving exposed live wires. We believe it will crumble in your hands after a number of years, creating an extreme risk of safety or fire to a homeowner in the future. Master Electricians Australia has called for a national solution and says the cable must be stripped from homes. The danger is DIY handymen who have installed the cable and won't be willing to pay the thousands of dollars to have it safely removed a potentially fatal ticking time bomb. Electrical contractors say the substandard cable is set to cause problems in Australia for years to come. Well, not so much the next one to two years. It's after that where they're going to be calling through a roof and put their hand on a maybe a live cable or a live wire. And if they've got insulation there as well, it should be a very, very hazardous for them. The New South Wales government has issued a mandatory Australia-wide recall of the product. 
but a spokeswoman says it's up to electrical safety regulators in each state and territory to decide what action to take. Tom Baldwin, QUT News. Prime Minister Tony Abbott was in Darwin today to launch Australia's newest patrol boat into operational service. Eight Cape-class patrol boats will replace Australian Customs Bay-class fleet within the next two years. Tony Abbott says the new Cape-class patrol boats will greatly improve Australia's ability to maintain maritime security. We've got the right personnel, uh, we've now got the right equipment and under the new government we have the right will. Mr Abbott wouldn't be drawn on whether the new patrol boats would be used to enforce the Coalition's policy to turn back asylum seeker boats, but he did say that they could each carry an extra 50 passengers in addition to crew. However, the launch of Cape St George is timely. Last night, a boat carrying asylum seekers was intercepted and those on board taken to Christmas Island. The people who came to Australia on board this boat by now already understand that they will not be settled in Australia. Mr Abbott says stopping the boats is a national imperative. It is not illegal to claim asylum, but it is illegal to come to Australia without proper authority and without proper documentation. Uh, and that's what these people are. They are illegally seeking to enter our country. The Immigration Minister today also weighed into the asylum seeker debate, saying he is building understanding and trust between Australia and Indonesia to stop the boats before they reach Australian waters. Jack Duna, QUT News. Penalty rates, high rents and the cost of parking are putting increasing pressure on Brisbane's inner city restaurants. One Up Market Restaurant 111 has shut down after only 14 months in operation. Some restaurant owners say they're struggling to survive. They say the cost of staff penalty rates, skyrocketing ranks and high parking costs for customers in Brisbane's central business district are putting pressure on small businesses. It's probably the toughest I've seen it in my 30 years. Uh, the pressures on keeping the doors open are very, very strong. Miss Hurst also says copyright laws mean she would have to pay around $2,000 a year to play music in her restaurant. Her response was to buy a canary to entertain the customers. Restaurant owners are also facing steadily increasing rents, with some paying more than $10,000 per month. Crippling federal and state government taxes are being blamed for the recent closure of multiple Brisbane restaurants. European cities including London, Milan and Paris are becoming cheaper to dine in their Brisbane because of this increase in overheads. The restaurant owners say if the spiralling costs continue, restaurant services will suffer and it could lead to a simplified style of food retailing to cut labour costs. Emma Clark, QUT News. The biggest race on the V8 calendar, the Bathurst 1000, gets underway this weekend. 29 drivers and cars will battle it out for the coveted racing crown. And defending champ Jamie Wincup claimed pole position in today's first qualifying round. Old rivals Holden and Ford once again face off on Mount Panorama. But for the first time since the 90s, the two foes will be joined by some new faces. Volvo returns to the legendary series and Mercedes-Benz debuting this year. Win Cup may have taken honours today, but Ford's Mark Winterbottom says it's his year. Oh, I'd do anything to win it, I'm desperate, so uh, you've got to drive that way. The opening practice sessions have already claimed the scalps of two major contenders. Tim Slade crashed into the wall in the opening exchanges. But it was this crash from championship newbie, Chaz Mostert, that really got the crowd's attention. We've seen an unbelievable run from him this year. Mostert took full blame for the crash. Yeah, unfortunately, just got a bit hungry out there, just trying to, I guess, find the limits out there, getting ready for qualifying, and uh, unfortunately just made a driver error. Almost 200,000 motor racing fans are expected to converge on the New South Wales regional city throughout the weekend, bringing $25 million worth of business with them. Tom Fowles, QUT News. The Brisbane Broncos will be wearing a new name on their backs for next year's season. The club's CEO, Paul White, announced industrial product company Pertec has signed a three-year sponsorship deal. It's the Broncos' gain in the Parramatta Eels' loss. Pertec has changed colours. Paul White says the new backer is a vote of confidence for the Broncos after a disappointing season. It has been a tough year for the club on, on field. No one's 
um, walked away from that um, and and we've needed to to learn those lessons and and to act upon that and, and we're obviously working very hard in all areas of the business. Players Corey Parker and Alex Glenn attended the unveiling sporting the maroon and gold away jersey. Glenn, who was named in the New Zealand team earlier this week, shrugged off suggestions of animosity in the New Zealand squad over Sonny Bill Williams' late inclusion in the team. A lot of the boys, um, you know, they've been uh, mates with him throughout his career, so, um, you know, it's just one of those things, it's a brotherhood and uh, we, know, we know each other and, and he'll definitely just fit straight in. The players are hoping the new sponsorship will be a good omen. After an unsuccessful end to the season for the Broncos, the team are looking to next year and working towards a comeback in 2014. Emily Saksuski, QT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Temperatures in the southeast today, 30 degrees in Brisbane and Ipswich. A warm 29 on the sunny coast and 27 on the Gold Coast. Around the nation tomorrow and the weekend is looking sunny. 28 in Brisbane, 27 in Sydney. Slightly cooler in Canberra and Melbourne. Perth may have a few showers throughout the day with a top of 20. The forecast for Queensland and there's a few clouds hanging around up north. 29 in Cairns with showers. A top of 30 in Townsville with a few morning showers. Sunny and warm in Mackay. Sitting in the early 30s in Rockhampton and Bundaberg, mostly sunny. And a sweltering 41 degrees in Longreach. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days, a top of 28 on Saturday, a possible afternoon shower, 23 on Sunday, and only slightly warmer Monday and the showers to return. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back Monday with more QT Web News. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>